Today I'm going to give you some tips on using click tracks or not using click tracks in the studio to get you closer to achieving the vibe and feel you want on your recordings. There's no rule that says you have to use a click track when you go into the studio. In fact, if you go back and listen to some classic records from way back that we've all listened to and try to time it out with a click or a metronome or something like that, I think you'll find that a lot of those records are kind of moving around, they're breathing. I've done three albums with the Grammy-winning infamous String Dusters. We've never used a click track, and we've done full band edits between different takes of the same song, and you would never know. Because if the vibe's cool, it's gonna work. Now, as a point of clarification, i just like to say that when I'm talking about click tracks, I'm also including in that program drums, because it's basically another type of a click track. Now, I'm gonna break this video up into four sections. First section is going to be when you should not use a click track. Second section will be when you should use a click track. Third section will be things you should do when you're not using a click track to make the process work better. And then fourth, things you can do when you're using a click or program drums to make things sound more natural. The main reason I discourage people from using click tracks is when there's already this really great vibe going on between members of a band or maybe a duo or maybe just a solo artist who just plays guitar or plays piano and they're just doing something really special. If you watch these kind of performers live and really listen to the songs, you'll find that they're speeding up and slowing down in different sections of the song. In fact, a lot of times there's this really cool dramatic thing you can do going into a chorus or a bridge if you actually slow down a little bit, just a little bit before a big section will just give it a lot of punch. You know, I just feel like using a click is kind of like chasing a ghost is the best way I can describe it. When you've got, say, a drummer playing with a click track, that guy's sitting there listening to this click more so than he's listening to the music. You'll also find, even with really great drummers who say, oh, I can play with a click, they're not really playing on the click. They're kind of surrounding it, as somebody once said. They're a little ahead, then they're a little behind, then they're a little ahead, and then they're a little behind. And what ends up happening is that every subsequent overdub after that, that is playing along, is going to be playing along to somebody who's actually listening to something else, as opposed to everybody listening to each other. And then the listener of this song is listening to music that was made and recorded listening to something that they're not hearing. It's like there's a ghost in the music. They're listening to music that has an element that has been taken away. I guess you could go in and beat Detective the drums and make them right on grid, but then it's like, why did you use a drummer? I mean, what, what was the point? And another situation where I don't like to use a click track is when I'm working on a film score. I'll often just play along while I'm looking at the screen and try to base my timing and my feel based on what's going on on the screen with the actors and the action that's going on. Of course, if it's like a chase scene, I got, you know, something more mechanical, yeah, I'm gonna use some program drums, but most of the time, I'm just going with the feel of what I'm seeing on the screen and letting that breathe and move with the action. When should you use a click or program drums with on-grid recording? Well, obviously, you would want to use a click if your drummer has terrible timing. Or maybe the band, it's young musicians, and they're just kind of really struggling to keep steady time. Might want to use a click then. But that can actually be a problem in itself because sometimes the struggle to play with a click can actually make it worse. And sometimes that rawness can be kind of cool. But anyway... Another good reason to use a click would be if you're gonna be adding loops later. You know you're gonna be adding certain kind of pre-made loop elements and all that. Although that's not always true, but in most cases you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're on grid if you're gonna be adding those kind of elements later. Another reason you're gonna to wanna to use a click would be if you're, say, working on music for a commercial or a scene in a movie and there's a very specific time from the beginning to the end, where it's got to end at exactly this right point, and, and you know you want it a certain way, sometimes it's easier to map out the click, get how many you know, measures and beats you want, and it just makes it a lot easier. Although I use Ableton Live, and I'll stretch that stuff and all that. 
I had this one scene in a film I worked on called Americana. There was this guy riding a bike, and I was trying to get his timing from riding the bike, but he kept getting off, and it was throwing my playing off, so I had to map it out with a click very specifically so that it would end right on the credits. Things you should do when you're not going to use a click or program drums. First off, I would suggest ahead of time going ahead and figuring out the tempo of your songs. Don't don't ever wait to do that when you're in the studio. Go ahead and do that when you're alone or with your co-conspirators working on the song. Play through the song and get to a point where it feels really good and then stop and tap out that tempo on an app on your phone or whatever and figure out what tempo works. Try a couple of these run a click track or run a metronome back and play along with it and make sure that you like that tempo. And the reason you want to do that is so that when you do go into the studio, you can make sure that on all your takes, actually use a click track, but just for the count off. Because if you're going to count it off by voice, it, it, people often get that wrong. So I find that, it, let's say you find the tempo needs to be 93 BPM and you got eight clicks at 93 BPM for every take, you're going to start off at least at that tempo, and you're probably, if you're fairly talented, not going to stray too far from there. I would suggest just practicing with a metronome in general anyway. It's something everybody should do and, and actually practice things a little bit slower than you normally would do it with a metronome. It really will force you to get your timing together. The other thing is when you're in the studio and you're not using a click, it's a great opportunity to just concentrate on the performance, concentrate on the vibe, concentrate on why you wrote the song. Just totally get into the feel because feel and vibe will always win out over perfection any day. Another thing I'll do in the studio if we're not using a click track and we're laying down initial tracks is to not even use headphones. Meaning if I've just got a solo artist that's performing on a guitar or maybe it's a small ensemble, a couple of guitars and a singer and they want to do it live together, if there's not anything they need to listen to in the headphones, I'll have them perform without headphones on. I'm just trying to remove all obstacles to a great performance. Now, just because you're working without a click or off-grid, that doesn't mean you can't do loops. You can always create a tempo map. However, I find those very time-consuming and, and, and hard to really get right. What I actually do is I'll just play the different elements of the loop along with the tracks that I have. Strangely enough, I found it pretty easy to do. There's something about overdubbing with people just playing naturally and letting the song flow that I find easier to do than when I'm overdubbing something that's on a grid. Things you should do when you are working with a click or program drums. So first off, working with click tracks is to make sure you've got a good sound on your click track plugin. Some of these can be pretty obnoxious. Find something that the drummer or the artist is really comfortable with. Another one of the tricks is I like to double time it with an echo. I know some of these plugins can do double time, but there's something about using a delay plugin and filtering it down a little bit and working with a mix. It kind of gives it almost like a feel, different sound that I find a lot easier to play with. And then one of my main tricks is to put a reverb on the click. When somebody like a drummer is playing with it, if they're actually right on the click, they actually can't hear it. It just kind of disappears, which is one of the reasons why I think they drift around a little bit. But if there's some reverb on that, they can hear that tail. It gives a little space to the click and makes it easier for them to follow and also allows you to turn down the click a little bit in the headphones. Now, sometimes instead of using an actual click track plugin, what I'll do is I'll try to find a loop that's kind of cool to play with that kind of gets the vibe or the feel of the song. That can help a lot as well. Another thing you can do is program in tempo changes with the click. That's a little more tricky. You got to make sure you're planning out how much your count off is, exactly where this is going to happen. But sometimes if I'm getting to like a bridge section, maybe I'll slow it down a little bit. Sometimes I want the choruses just a teeny bit faster. So on the measure leading up to the chorus, I'll maybe just bump up the tempo a little bit and then bring it back down on the verses. Another trick I learned a long time ago as far as programming drums is concerned is to go ahead and when you're when you're programming in the individual parts, instead of setting your quantize to input or recording the quantize in as you're laying down the parts, is go ahead and lay down your initial drum parts without the quantize on. After you do it, quantize them at 50% and just get them a little closer. See how it sounds. Then quantize them an additional 25% 
and get it a little closer. And and the idea here is that you kind of work all the notes up closer to the beat until you get the right kind of feel. Doesn't always work with everybody, but it's an interesting technique I've seen used before that worked great. Back in the day when I was doing a lot more rap music, I often saw Little John programming drums or he would have the kick and snare on grid, but his hi-hat or percussion, he would do off grid and just get a really good feel. Or he would have everything programmed out and he would take the hi-hat and just nudge it back a little bit behind the beat. We actually did this on ADAS a couple of times where we would delay that hi-hat track just a teeny bit. It's another kind of particular type of feel, but it gets you out of the grid just a little bit. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, hit the subscribe button and make sure to leave some comments and make some suggestions on future topics.